This is Shy and Ty, and I'm Andrew, a Red Vest associate at Lowe's. Ty and Shy want to renovate their backyard, so I'm here to help them through the process. This is Ty and Shy's house, and this is Ty and Shy's backyard. And that's Vinny and Sal. So, Ty and Shy, what do you want to do in your backyard? The yard is definitely a sanctuary for us. I think one of our main objectives and goals is to define specific areas of our backyard. We want it to ultimately be a really welcoming space for everyone. It's been a goal of ours to kind of expand the pre-existing flagstone into some pathways. Access to our basement stairs is something that we've been thinking about for a while. And defining our herb garden, building something that keeps the herbs in and keeps the wiener dogs out. Love those ideas. Let's kick things off with the paver walkway. Be sure to check out our other video of Ty and Shy building a garden wall around their garden beds. So here we go. How to design and install a paver walkway with real customers guided by real Lowe's Red Vest Associates. There are all types of materials you can use for pathway, like concrete blocks, brick interlocking panels, and loose gravel. But for the organic feel you guys are going for, I recommend checking out our stepping stones options. Ooh, I love that. Look at the colors in the stone. Ooh, that kind of matches what we already got going on. I dig it. Let's get started on the walkway. <laughs> Here are the majority of the tools that Ty and Shy will need to build their paver walkway. And here are most of the materials they'll need for the project. Step one, mark the path layout. For straight walkways, use stakes and string. Ensure the string layout is square when the diagonals are equal and level. For curves, mark with a hose using a two by four to keep the width consistent. So maybe, yeah, we make that curve a little bit wider so it kind of comes out away from the stairwell. Yeah, this is looking nice, I feel like we want kind of that half moon shape we were talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Once you've got your shape, mark the outline with landscape marking paint. Now that the area is measured and marked, use a shovel to remove the sod and dirt. Just make sure there's extra space for the base and fill, about twice as deep as the thickness of your paver or flagstone. And since you'll be using paver base panels instead of crushed rock, you won't need to dig as deeply as you ordinarily would. Once you've dug down the right amount, you can use a level in a two by four running long ways to make sure it's level. So we got our board and we've got our level. Let's see how it looks. Wow. It's looking pretty good. We're Perfect. between the lines. Okay, so we have checked our level lengthwise. Now we're gonna check across the path. Looks pretty level to me. That's spot on. Does that look good, Andrew? Actually, in that direction, the pathway should slope away from the house, about a quarter inch per foot. Oh, that totally makes sense. It, we get a lot of rain here. We definitely don't want the water running towards the deck. All right, well, let's rake some dirt to build that slope. Let's do it. Nice. Next, tamp the area to ensure the base is properly compacted. You can use a hand tamper, or if your soil is too dense, you can rent a plate compactor. Properly compacting the base is key to keeping the pathway intact and in place for a long, long time. We're turning it, we're turning and burning. Looks great. Now let's start filling in the trench. We'll start with some layers of protection against weeds, flooding, and freezing. Add some landscape fabric to keep out weeds. Trim it slightly beyond the edge of the path. Oh, yeah. Next, we'll add in a base to create a stable foundation and prevent flooding. Pipe. Grab half-inch PVC pipes and lay them along your path. Pour a layer of sand over the area, then use a straight 2x4 to screed the sand and create a flat surface. Pipes help ensure the base is level. Once you screed those sections, you can remove the pipes and fill in beds with the remaining sand. But be gentle when you remove the pipes. You don't want to mess up the level surface you've just carefully created. Before we get to the next layers, you should add some landscape edging to keep everything in place. Yeah! Remember those paver panels we talked about earlier? Well, now's the time. Wow, these are so light. Yeah, pretty easy. Plus, they saved you from having to dig deeper and from having to use more material. When you place the first panel, set it against a straight edge of a pre-existing structure, like the top of your stairs. The next panel should overlap the grooves of the adjacent panels. They don't really seem to fit. No sweat. 
Just place another panel and remember to always stagger the joints. Then mark the axis and cut with your utility knife. If your path is curved, you can cut along the curve. If your path is straight, cut a 2x4 wider than the walkway to use a straight edge. Just a couple more steps until we get to the fun part. We need to put down another layer of landscaping fabric and then add half an inch of sand on top. This is to account for the different thickness of the flagstones. All right, time for the fun stuff. Let's get it. Yes, bring in the pavers. Always lift with your legs. And if you need extra support, wear a brace to help lighten the load on your back. Perfect. Start laying the stones against the straight edge, like you did with the panels. Lay the outer border first, then fill in between. To account for any stones that are not perfectly flat, you want to remove some of the sand from the thicker pieces of flagstone and add a bit more for thinner pieces. I love this, it's like putting together a puzzle. <laughs> Look how pretty the stone is. It's gorgeous. Make sure to leave at least a quarter inch joint between the stones. You can adjust to make sure stones are level for walking. If you need to trim any stones, an angle grinder with a masonry blade is perfect for the job. Don't forget your safety gear. First, mark your cut. Then with the stone on a stable surface, line up the blade with your mark and start cutting. Push the blade through the stone with steady, even pressure. You can use a rubber mallet to help break apart any right. sections that weren't fully cut. Nice job, guys. We're rounding the finish line. Now we can give it a quick spray down to settle the existing sand, and then we'll add sand to fill in between the pavers. Andrew, can we use any type of sand here? You should use polymeric joining sand so your stones stay in place. It has additives that provide a better bond. Slow sand. Just sweep it into the joints and use a hand tamper to help settle the stones. Add more sand and repeat as needed. Cute! Let's tidy things up. Remove all of the excess sand with a broom or leaf blower to prevent hazing. Lightly spray the path with a hose, then cut any excess weed barrier you see poking out of the edges. Add plants, river rocks, and lights around the perimeter. You want to give it a little something extra. Alrighty, lights, camera, reveal. This was Shy and Ty's backyard before, and this is Shy and Ty's backyard after. Oh, it's so sweet. It's so perfect. I love the stone. I love how beautiful each one is. Yeah, just created like a whole new vibe back here. It looks, it looks really sweet. The paver base was super light and easy to put in and like kind of gave us a nice even base for, for the rocks. And we could cut it to match yeah. the exact shape that we wanted. Yeah, super easy. I feel like it's just completely elevated our space. I am so proud of you two. It looks amazing. Thank you for watching. Everything you saw in this makeover is from Lowe's and is linked in the description below. Shy and Ty also built a garden wall. Be sure to check out that video too. Make sure to subscribe for more makeover content and leave a comment below to let us know what you think about this backyard transformation.